our chief guest today, Honorable State Minister of Finance, Mr. Ran Vikram Ratna, our guest of honor, Mr. Mano Titavalda, Senior Advisor to the Minister of Finance and Mass Media, officials from the Ministry of Finance, Mr. Jim Maccabee, CEO, Standard Chartered Bank, our strategic partner today, and other officials from the bank, Mr. Nissa Kasim, CEO and Chief Editor of Daily FT, Mr. K.A.S. Edward, Registrar, University of Colombo, Dr. Pradeep Dharmadasa, Dean, Faculty of Management and Finance, University of Colombo, leading women professionals and the entrepreneurs representing key industry sectors, members of the MB Alumni Association, University of Colombo, distinguished invitees, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed a great pleasure to welcome all of you to this unique pre-budget forum 2019. Dear industry leaders, may I thank you, the leading and well-known industry personalities in Sri Lanka for accepting our invitation. This is your opportunity to comment on key issues and solutions impacting your respective industry segments to be addressed by the budget proposals for 2019. So I'll start from um, Chaturi Ranasinghe, for chairperson of Women's Chamber of Industries and Commerce. Issue one, to improve the ease of doing business and to help women and also men entrepreneurs, a single window center to be open countrywide to attend to all legal and mandatory regulations, formalities and registrations for starting an enterprise or business without having to travel to the capital to do so. Information in all three languages of the services facilities, including financial availabilities for the would-be entrepreneurs investors. There is a woeful lack of information on such subjects which hampers the would-be entrepreneurs, many of whom have little or no knowledge of how to set about making their aspirations a reality. Issue two, microcredit schemes for the, from the state banks, especially for the micro and small women entrepreneurs. Access to finance for women entrepreneurs, especially from the provinces and from the lower income groups is a major issue. It has been shown that microfinance projects with exorbitant interest rates of the private sector have uh, have, been the, uh, have not been the answer, and they have created innumerable pro pro problems for such women and driven them even to take desperate measures when they are unable to make payments in time. This was also highlighted by the UN expert, Mr. Bo Boholsky, who visited Sri Lanka re recently. It has also been borne in mind that many of them are ignorant that starting a business entails needs to have a source of information. Also, many of them have no lands to offer as collaterals. Issue number three, for reforms in the system of education, teacher training, and vocational training, these funds should be used for well-considered plans drawn with also with academics, professionals, and knowledge individuals from the private and industrial sector to ensure the reforms would result in the desired outputs and that they are sustainable. As we very well know, there's a uh, significant lack of women participating in the labor force. Uh, the highlighted impediments are safe commute and lodging and duties as a primary caregiver. How the national budget uh, you know, allocations can help in this area is we've recommended in our policy and strategy report, uh, which has been handed over to the Prime Minister's office through the NHRDC, is providing uh, safe transportation and uh, safe accommodation where women are concentrated into uh, workforces through private public partnerships. This is coming very strongly from the hospitality industry and the apparel sector. Duties as a primary caregiver also creates a dis, uh, you know, uh, disconnect for educated women and they are making choices without proper alternatives. So there was a discussion about creating a talent cooperation which registers qualified IT literate women and has a social security code where they can opt to work part-time, flexi-time 
or work from home. Imposing women benefits and welfare on private sector employers will act as a disincentive in the long run to hire women. So uh, expecting the private sector to bear the cost of hiring women with extended leave, benefits, daycare is really not going to work in the longer term. Uh, we also have uh, women who are migrating to do um, manual labor jobs. When these migrant returnees come back, the women's ministry is looking at uh, 1,000 daycare centers. Through the vocational system, can we retrain them to be daycare center associates and caregivers so that the more qualified women can go to work or choose to work from home? Final one is, today we look at um, state-funded university graduates as a troublesome lot who clamor for jobs and the duty of the state and the country has become providing jobs. But there is also the better uh, equipped youth, the millennials, who are not expecting state funded education, who are uh, also excelling in academia and sports and other, and they are seriously, I'm seeing, uh, since I'm involved with a lot of young people, a second level brain drain. They are going away and we don't have a program to get them back. Now, we would like a women construction policy where women can enter at different levels. For example, at the moment we have a huge uh, lack of women, uh, uh, labor in the construction sector. So we would like the women to come in in uh, soft skills like painting, plastering, things like that, and we are trying our level best to get these women to come in, but the government is not helping. The second one is, um, there is taxation at the moment, so there is a problem, <coughs> excuse me, in the uh, taxation where the informal sector, uh, where the women entrepreneurs or male entrepreneurs cannot come in because we have a, uh, um, uh, this thing of 50,000 rupees. See, the, and you have to pay um, turnover tax, I think, on 50,000. So we would like that to be increased at least to 5 million so that the informal sector can come in. Otherwise, any informal sector will not come into construction when you have to pay uh, 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 withholding tax if it is 50,000. So there are two things that we want to do. The other one, of course, uh, there is a downturn in the project, uh, construction sector. Not because of there is no work, there are no projects, but the project implementation is getting very long. I'd like to suggest um, uh, a formal training for the craft uh, sector. Um, I know the National uh, Design Center has some training on craft and some universities and uh, private institutions as well. But I would like to suggest a, a degree level program as there are few opportunities to learn. If the young people um, are designing in craft and uh, creating new craft ideas, there will be more demand for craftsmen and women to produce these uh, designs. And also, um, I would like to uh, suggest a fund for entrepreneurs who wish to start a craft entrepreneurship. As we all know, that road safety is a big menace in this country, and we see we've already overtaken the statistics of deaths versus people have been maimed for life uh, in, in the, during this year as well. So my uh, issue that I'm going to raise is, can we really allocate some additional funds to really, uh, you know, uh, especially 60% of the road uh, designs are not optimal, so therefore, although we have infra infrastructure, these are also one reason, and also the behavioral issues and all that defensive driving techniques have to be taught and all that. So can we allocate some additional funds to, you know, uh, do promote this issue and then how do we really uh, minimize these road accidents and that is going to be a big problem in this country to prevent these issues in the country. The number two is, uh, again, in the road area. Uh, plastic waste is a big problem again in this country. Uh, our neighboring India is using plastic mixed with uh, bitumen and using on roads. 50,000 kilometers of road have been uh, mixed with plastic waste and you know, used on the on road building, and in fact, uh, their road research institute also says that it's more uh, the road uh, surface is more strengthened uh, with when you use uh, these uh, plastic waste as well. 
So we can kill two birds from one stone, so if we can do that, so can, we, can the government look at that aspect, right? Uh, we can minimize the, the waste problem as well. Third issue is again um, in the green transport uh, uh, area because government also wants to achieve compliance for SDG goals by 2030. So I would like to propose, I think government is spending about three to four billion dollars on uh, fuel. Uh, and uh, how do we really uh, use alternative uh, fuels like, you know, um, uh, biofuels, biodiesel, biogas, and all that? At least if we can save 1% of that foreign exchange drain, I think we can do so much to the economy. My recommendation is that for the government to consider giving us tax breaks in R&D to develop this category, which will lead to a healthier nation, and will also encourage the manufacturers to drive innovation. Secondly, Honorable Minister, I draw your attention to the safety match industry. As you are aware, thrice in the recent past, we went out of stock of key raw materials which are imported by the government of Sri Lanka and then distributed to the industry players. As a result of this, we had to shut down the factories the entire, under this industry sector. We ran into serious liquidity issues and over 8,500 people lost their jobs. So our recommendation is that in order to avoid such delays, and it's a fact that the government cannot be doing business, but must develop a process where the private sector can ha have its freedom to do business. So our recommendation is instead of, import, instead of the government trying to import the raw materials directly, give the license to the Match Manufacturers Association so that based on our demand, we import the chemicals. And lastly, under the voluntary organization, as I sit on the Rotary International Global Committee, and we do work a lot with the government and uh, for the benefit of the people of Sri Lanka. Even though Rotary is not an NGO, it has been listed under the NGO here in Sri Lanka, and uh, of late, we have to also pay an NGO tax for all the inward donations, including the withholdings tax. So this should not be charged from entities who are registered in uh, Sri Lanka is our, uh, my recommendation. I want to talk about the crash. If we want more women to, you know, not to drop off after childbirth, we have to uh, encourage companies, the pri even private companies, uh, in private establishments to have a crash. So for that, nobody's going to have a crash if they don't get some benefit because they have to employ people and there is a exp expenditure incurred. So I have a f I, I, I'm suggesting to give a uh, bit of a tax benefit to the private co the corporate sector so that more people will get into it. The other thing is I want to talk about medical tourism. Now, Singapore, India, Malaysia, Thailand, they thrive on medical tourism. We have brought this up even with the previous governments, but it's very sad to say no government is paying attention to this. If we promote medical tourism, none of our consultants and the, you know, the, the brain, it, there won't be a brain drain. But at the moment, most of them want to go off the country because their earning capacity is low. The other thing is the private-public partnership. That also has to be addressed because at the moment, talking about the private uh, healthcare sector, there's no private, uh, public private partnership. We had a lot of meetings with the honorable ministers, but it stops at that. NCDs can be uh, actually reduced to a great extent if the screening is done early. So free screening can be done now that we have got a grant. The industry is having two major issues. One is the climate effect, and number two, the labor shortage. So together with the, with the Ministry of Agriculture, the industry is working on uh, bringing agri-modernization. Now for this, we are talking of, say, polytunnels and, and greenhouses and drip irrigation systems. So Honorable Minister, if we can at least have these 
modern, modern agri modernization equipment and machinery of the uh, like the duty and vet. I'm sure that most of you would have read as I have that in the doing business index of 2017 we as a country were actually ranked 111th out of 190 which is actually that is proof that it is not easy to do business over here. And as I'm sure everybody over here has experienced at some time or the other, you know, whether we are trying to get a contract done, whether it's a license, it's not easy. And when we track back, it is mostly in the government departments, which is frankly a lo logistical nightmare. And what is the answer, which obviously digitization and online processes, which I understand very much has been suggested last year. And I don't think it's a question of bringing it into the budget or suggesting it, but implementation. It's at implementation stage that this falls flat, right? So I am very strongly asking for accelerated implementation of a digitization process to make business easier here. That is one. My second uh, suggestion is also to do with digitization, though I'm a little old for that now. Um, you see, as a support industry, we are one of the first to be axed whenever there is an eco economy slump, whenever there is a budget cut, you know, advertising is out, foolishly, but it is, right? So we are also absolutely on the digital bandwagon. We are moving forward and trying to learn, but we are rather late to this uh, important phenomenon. And I know that there are a lot of digital personalities who would say that we are very good and we are on par. Actually, we're not. We're not a world standard yet at all, and we really need to groom ourselves, especially the youth of, this, of the country, and go forward. So I'm actually asking if there is a possibility. There are experts in the region. There are huge experts in Hong Kong. There are experts in Korea. Is there any way that we can, you know, on some kind of a short-term visa, bring down these experts and start bringing us up to world standard in digitization? It's very important for the future. Uh, the third thing that I wanted to speak about, in our industry, actually, we don't face any gender bias. There are a lot of women in management uh, in our level, more, actually more women than men, so very happy about that. However, we face one serious problem, is between the ages of 30 to 39, we see an alarming dropout. And this is their age where they are most productive, right, where their careers are most important. Unfortunately, with later childbirth, they have to drop out. And we really need to take a serious call on this. I was extremely in, uh, happy to see that a company like Ceylon Biscuits has opened a daycare center themselves, which is wonderful to see. But like uh, she said, everybody's not going to do that unless there's a subsidy and unless there's something of benefit to them. We really need to look at that. Our own companies, our own industries, between 30 to 39, and even the Q1 labor force statistics show that there is a 22.9% dropout with women, only 7.7% 7. 7 for men in that age group. It's a vital age group. We need to ensure that they're brought back into the industry. There are two areas that uh, I'm broadly going to touch on. One is assistance for businesses to grow, and the other one is skill development. And there's two of us from the industry. So Shehani from 99X will delve on uh, the skill development part of it. So in terms of the assistance for development of uh, businesses, the last uh, budget actually has given quite a lot of different uh, programs, starting from the NES, uh, Enterprise Sri Lanka, as well as there, there's market access support, which are the things that we asked for. Uh, the area that I would like to highlight is, for example, Enterprise Sri Lanka. Uh, one of the challenges that especially the growing companies face is collateral, especially ICT, where we don't really have machinery or collateral and it, it's mainly for uh, expanding with people. So that's the area we, I would, one of my proposals is to look at that. There is also this NCGI, which is a one third uh, supportive of the collateral with insurance, but I'm not sure whether that will address it completely. So that's, that's one. And um, overall, in terms of N NES, uh, uh, we still haven't got the full benefit of it because there's a lot of um, bureaucracy or processors involved. So um, I don't really have the answer for it, but maybe if, if there's some kind of uh, budget for that administration additionally, so that people can be set up to administer it uh, strongly, that, that may help to get this money out to the uh, companies. So we're still struggling with that after a year. The money hasn't completely come out. Uh, that, that's, that's in terms of um, the businesses. And uh, in terms of women, uh, what, what I was thinking is, if there's a KPI, uh, not so much that there's a women program, but a KPI that is measured 
on, on the women participation, then it can be measured whether the women participation is growing, and then if it's not, you can take more measures, and that is currently not done, I guess, and that would be a proposal that uh, I would say for the business area. So uh, moving on to the skill development, uh, since Shehani will talk about it in length, I have just one um, idea, and that is, uh, we're talking about various things for women. Uh, as you know, there's only about 25% participation in ICT. And therefore, um, uh, there's this uh, concept that women think that you really need to be very technical to be in the ICT industry. And it's, it's not the case. Uh, there's so many things as business development and so many things that need to be done. And therefore, these arts and biology and all these other um, graduates who probably don't have jobs, and the, and the earning capacity is very high in ICT. Uh, uh, I, I believe that if we can create the mindset